did have a Nintendo PlayStation in there, and there was like four kids with the, the video game thing and playing this video game that says tent in the senior hallway. So I thought that was kind of cool, but I thought the whole idea of the tents was kind of bad. I, you know, it, it, I, I want to be wowed. There was one year that, there was one year as a senior prank, and I thought this was great, that they saran wrapped all the teachers' cars, and I thought that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun, especially when you got the one angry teacher. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna. With that note, I'm going on. <laughs> What they destroy last year? They, 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 they trampled the girl and they broke the ceiling. They like punched up a Oh, people were punching up. Who? You go see Yale now. But a girl got trampled? Yeah, was it a senior or was it like a freshman? It was freshman? a senior like in the oh, family. Huh. She was fell and I think like a scooter hand. Well, that's why we can't do scooter days because some idiot like fell off their scooter and made it off. No, and like there are plenty of people that like don't need to play scooters. Like no one, they won't move out of the way for you to jump off your scooter. Do you like walk through these afterwards and just pile them? And like all the trash cans and stuff are like just so trashy. It was insane. And then they come on. You were in Spain last year? No, it was in Spain. Huh. I wish I could tell you funny stuff, but I, I kind of like hearing that. But You know, if you do a senior prank and it makes the news, I think that's like extra credit. I think everyone gets an honors diploma. But I can't tell you to do that. But, nor do I have any really good ideas. I mean, I have some ideas, but someone will actually probably do it and then say, well, Mr. Sturps, I can do it. Being I'm recording right now, I probably shouldn't. All right, so here I go. I'm sorry. Seven point four to see. Yeah. Oh, we're we're the the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard one prank that was kind of funny. You take, you take guinea pigs, and you let them from one, two, and four, and you let them go, and so they're going back to the back. I saw that. I was like, I was like, I hear my friends tell me that they took the principal's car and built it and like took my pieces and built it in the school to get my middle school. I've heard that prank. I don't know. I don't know if they took picture. I've heard that prank. I don't know if anyone's ever done it. I might get a perfect middle, but I think it's yeah. classic. Because I thought my friend told me that her dad told me that he went in the But I don't know. That's always how, that's always how the story goes. Because my dad told me of a similar event that took place back in Jersey. But there was no one that, it was always like three degrees of separation from it. So no one could ever justify that ever happened. But I love it. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah. I know Ponderosa, there was a bunch of kids that got charged with animal cruelty because they brought a bunch of chickens into the building and they fell off the second floor thing and a lot of them were maimed. And so they made a charge with animal cruelty. Died. Yeah, we shouldn't involve animals. <laughs> uh, and we got a horse. I think it'd be kind of fun to run a horse through the hallways. So, like, the owner was saying to me that would be really dangerous because they can't walk it out. Thank you very little. Nope. The nice thing is, is you are not in trouble. Most kids go running. All right, I'm going to start going through these. I know we could talk all day, and it's all recorded. I don't really remember what it was. Oh, yes, you do. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, you guys see through me right away. Remind me when you graduate, I'll happy to tell you your senior prank. No, like, you just tell us, like, you can't do the same thing during the done breed. Different state, though. <laughs> Different state. But it's also, you know. Yeah. <laughs>
Then you know about no. it. Ours, yeah, it was good, I think. And oh, someone got hurt, so it, you know it was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, prior to an election, a candidate wishes to conduct a poll to see where he stands. His campaign staff does a house-to-house -house survey in a few of the neighborhoods where he is running for office. Out of 350 respondents, 204 say they will vote for him. Okay? So, is it random? Yeah. yeah. All to one specific um, neighborhood. Not yeah, I, I'd say it's, I mean, if those are the only neighborhoods that are going to vote for this guy, I guess you could arbitrarily say it's a random thing that you do, but I don't think it's random. So they just went door to door. They didn't pick randomly. Um, independence. I, I guess it could be. I mean, if you're talking about a large city and those neighborhoods are composing of thousands of homes, I'd say absolutely. And is it a normal, normally sampling distribution? And I would say yes. I'm sorry, Jordan. I tried to get on here. Okay, so create a 95% confidence. So things that we know about this is uh, we're talking about 350 um, responses that took place. Of that... Um, so P hat is 204 over 350. So P hat is a success. That's 0.583. That said, yeah, we'll vote for you. And then the Q is the non-response. So that's going to be uh, the 146 out of 350, which is 0.417. So 41% of those houses said no. Uh, so it's created a 95% confidence interval. So if we're using 95%. That's going to yield us uh, 1.96, and I am going to use E is equal to Z times P times Q divided by N. Okay, so I'm going to put Z is 1.96, probability it will times probability it won't, so 0.583 times 0.417. All over N, which we said was 350. So, so that looks like this will come out to 0 0.0517. So with my confidence interval, you're talking about 53.13%, comma 63.47%. So with 95% confidence, if we were to reduplicate this test, uh, we would find that our new average amount of people saying yes would fall somewhere within that parameter. Uh, if I do a 99% confidence, so 99% confidence, that means I'm going to use a z-score of 2.576, which means I'm going to plug that in there. Everything else is the same. And this is going to give us a little bit narrower, so point, or 51, 51.51%, 65.09%. It's a more broad. So we are 99% confident that our results will fall here, which is a wider window than the 95% confidence, which is there. Uh, do we possess strong statistical evidence to counterclaim the candidate will get less than 50%? Um, the answer is no. So both of those are 95% and our 99% confidence intervals are both above 50%. So this candidate should get more than 50% of the votes. So we can't say that it's not going to happen. Um, do we have evidence to counterclaim that he is currently has 70% support? Uh, that's no. Neither of our our uh, confidence intervals are close to 70% or above 70%. So, so this person doesn't have 70% of the vote. I mean, if that just happened during the election, then it'd be like, oh, wait a minute. That's all we thought. Is that okay? All right. And then number two, Arbitron is a company that keeps track of which radio stations are the most listened to. And the results are used to adjust advertising rates. One local radio station looks at the most recent Arbitron information, which shows that they draw 14.2% of the listeners during the morning rush hour. 
The data is based on random sample size of 500 taken from the Denver, Denver metro area. Okay, so uh, is it random sampling? And it says data is based on a random sample. So yes, independence, well, 500 people, probability will, probability won't, but be above 30, so yes. Normal distribution, yes. So way above. So we're looking good on all of those. Um, so we have N is 500 people that were surveyed. Probability is 0.142. Probability of not is 0.858. Uh, what is your sample proportion? So we're talking about 71 out of 500 that we said worked. And I got to pause there for a minute because how did I get 71? I do. So what you do in order to get that 71 is this times this would give me that. Okay? And then create a 90% confidence interval. So remember, 90%, again, you're going to have these tables to use. Uh, Z-score is 1.645. So E equals 1.645 times the square root of the probability of will times the probability of won't over sample size. So that's going to come out to 0.0257. So if you do the math, it's going to be 14.2 minus 0 0.0257 and 14.2. And I didn't do the math, I'm sorry. We'll have to add or subtract it. So with 90% confidence, if we redid this, it would fall within there. If n were increased, if n were increased, if that was increased, what do you know about the confidence interval? So if I increase a fraction, the frac if I increase the denominator of a fraction, the fraction becomes a smaller number. It becomes closer to zero, right? If I increase that, if I take the square root of that, does that still take place? And that's yes. So this number, if, as this grows, this becomes smaller. If that becomes smaller, then you multiply it by that. So that would mean that our confidence interval would also become smaller because this number would become smaller than what either of those are. You know, if you went to 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever. So those would become smaller. So your confidence interval becomes smaller. Being you're taking a larger portion of the population, you're more confident that your results, if you did it again, would fall within that confidence interval. That's what that would mean. If we increase the confidence interval from 90 to 99, so we increase it from 90 to 99, so we're increasing that. That's going to make the confidence interval larger. The more confident you are that something's going to take place, the wider your margin of error has to be. Or not margin of error, but your confidence interval. So that's where, unfortunately, we didn't really have a big election this past year. Um, but when those election results take place, you're going to see some that say, hey, this person leaves polls by 68%, then you see that plus or minus 3%. That's kind of your confidence interval that's taking place. Okay? A lot of times they're going to do 90% confident, 95% confidence is going to cost you a lot more. So sometimes if you look at that little small print at the bottom, it's going to tell you your confidence interval. Gotcha. I saw it in the index. So, that makes sense? <coughs> confidence interval is okay? All right. God bless you. All right, 7.5. 7.5 is not too bad. They give you the formulas. They have one formula that's a little bit out of place. So at the very bottom of 7.5, if they are telling you you want an interval that takes a certain amount, the margin of error is half the overall width of the interval. Okay, so if they're saying, hey, we want some sort of interval, then the margin of error is you're going to have to divide it in half. Now, if they give you plus or minus 3%, or if they say, you know, some of the others, it depends upon how well you do. But if they say on that very first problem, it says, fill in, oh, we're going back to cores. Yeah. Just a little closer. 
fill machine at Coors Brewing Plant is supposed to fill cans with an average of 12 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.05. This particular machine has been troublesome lately. A plant manager wants to sample some cans, creates a 95% interval, but wants the interval to be only 0.02 ounces wide. Okay, so this person wants 0.02 ounces wide this to take place. So this needs to be divided by 2. So that's going to give you 0.01. Okay? So now, the formula that's given there, you have N equals Z times standard deviation over E. And then we're going to square that. Okay? So if we want a 95% confidence, that goes to an automatic z-score of 1.96. Is that okay so far? So we've been using that over and over and over again. Okay, so things I want to find. I need z. I have z. Good. Okay, sx. Sx. Oh, standard deviation. So we have standard deviation of this problem. They told us they told us in the problem that that is 0.05. So we have that. We have that. Now we need E, and E is what? 0.01. So this becomes E. So again, it says margin of error is half the overall width of the interval. So that's your plus or minus. Okay, so we're going with that. So if I plug that in, this is going to tell me how many cans I'm going to go. So I'm going to go 1.96 times the standard deviation, which in this case was, I don't, oh, that's point of, I was trying to plug it. Jeez, I don't want to miss that. Because it's red, dude. <laughs> Over E, which is in this case, because we want our error, because our error is usually plus or minus, it has to be this divided by 2, so halfway in between. So that's going to give me 0.01, and this quantity is going to be squared. If you do this math, 96.04, you're not going to take a partial can. So every time in this, this goes against everything you've ever reasoned with. Every time you have a decimal amount, you round up. So if we were to sample 97 cans, we are going to come up with a 95% confidence interval where we are looking with our standard deviation and we want our margin of error to be points. So if we, if we select 97 cans, we're going to fall within the parameters to do this test. Okay, so this is telling them, you know, how many cans should you pick? I'm going to pick 100 random. Now this is telling you, if you pick 97 of them, you're going to, with a 95% confidence interval, you're going to get this same kind of margin of error. Yeah? Um, for, the, yeah for the margin of error, will you always take half? Yes and no. Um, as far as the problem set goes, uh, on like number three on the problems, it gives you plus or minus three. So you only have to divide by three. You don't have to go because that's already given you a margin a thing of being six wide. So they've already divided it by two for you. So if they list plus or minus on there or something, then I would do that. And then. And then uh, number two, they actually say, how many people should be surveyed? What 99% confidence interval to be with to be correct within? So if you're talking about 99%, if you want within 99%, it's going to be 0.01 because that's 1%. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, so sample size for proportion. So it's going to be the same type of equation we're going to use. What percent of Creek seniors will remember to buy their moms a present for Mother's Day? Okay, I am going to get a random sample of seniors. If the uh, if other research shows 30% of the kids remember Mother's Day, how many students should I sample in order to make sure my 90% confidence interval is 10% wide? So if you're going 10% wide, you want to divide that by 2. So you're talking about 5%, which is 0.05. That's going to be E for us. Um, P hat 
we are going to say 30%, so that's 0.3. Q hat has to be 0.7 because the two of those have to become 1. And then if you plug in the information that's given, oh, and then we want a 90% confidence interval. So 90% goes with 1.645. And if we plug that into our formula that's given there, N equals P hat Q hat, so 0.3 times 0.7. And then times Z, which is 1.645 over E, we found E to be 0.05. If we did this, that's going to show us N is 227.3. What do we do in this case? Round up every time. So we need to sample 228 of the seniors for this confidence interval to take place. Okay, and then flip over to problem number one on the other side. Use the confidence interval to figure out each answer. Okay, so, so if you have 10.5 is less than or equal to this, it's less than or equal to 18.9. If you want to figure out this, you're going to add the two together and divide by two. So that's going to tell you that's 14.7. And then how do you figure out the margin of error? The margin of error is if I took 10.5, which is less than 14.7, well, duh, which is less than or equal to 18.9, how far is it to here? How far is it to here? And if you just went 18.9 minus 14.7, or you went 14.7 minus 10.5, you're going to find your margin of error becomes 4.2. That's all you do. And that, guys and girls, is all I have for you. So I will, it looks like number two, three, and four, they're all pretty straightforward and easy on tonight's assignment. They all go exactly with what I lectured. So you can get a start out on them, or you can sit around for the last 10 minutes and look at each other. <laughs>